Yes, well, as a child, I remember coming here with my mother and father on always on the sort of opening night and seeing the uh, the, the judging of the boats, and uh, so I must have been doing that from probably about the age of seven, I think. And in those days, I think the the main arena was the Promenade Gardens, wasn't it? It was indeed, yes. And there was a landing stage, which is still there actually, just the other side of the bridge, and it was very different from how it is now because, of course, the focal point was the bandstand. Uh, whereas the bandstand is sort of behind people now. So it, is a, it was a different thing altogether, but it was always a very exciting, exciting evening. You know, as kids, we thought it was absolutely great. And of course, you've been the man behind the mic for 50 years now, but I think it was Ray Tinty in those days, was it, who used to do the commentary? Yes, yes, he, um, he did the commentary, I think, for something like about 17 years and uh, came in that period sort of after the war. But of course he was very different. Um, Ramo had got an excellent singing voice, which I don't have, but uh, you know, he did community singing and all that sort of thing. And um, when the event moved here to the Derwent Gardens, he didn't really like uh, this situation at all, having everybody's uh, backs to him. Uh, and of course the whole job, the compare's job, had to change and um, be a voice rather than a person. But before you became the voice, of course, you were a competitor. So how did that happen? Well, that happened with a group of friends, really, and we all belonged to uh, a group, and we decided we'd like to... Uh, they were appealing for people to uh, enter models, and they were particularly looking for younger people, which we were then. And, uh, yeah, so we decided we'd, we'd have a go at it, and... Um, it, we had two models and then we, we got a, the, the first prize and that was the Derwent Bell, a paddle steamer and, uh, and that's how I came to be on the bandstand because they hadn't got a compare and uh, they asked me if I would do it, well really said if you want people to know who's won the boat parade somebody's got to do this and my friends and my wife as she is now pushed me up on the bandstand and uh, anyway, it went reasonably well, I'm told. And uh, they said, well, will you do, just do another fortnight for us? So I said, yeah, yeah, I'll do that. Then, it, will you see the season out? So I said, yes. And then, of course, it was, uh, well, you will come back next year, won't you? And, and that's how it all started. And then eventually I became the secretary of the, uh, of the committee, which then became a company and uh, it went from there really and I've, I've been here all this time. So that was 1968 I think you took over Jeff and then into the 70s the committee decided to make it a little bit more razzmatazz, is that right? Yeah, oh yes, we decided that we've really got to, if we were going to say in the game things have got to change, we've got to make the illumination side a little bit stronger and uh, we started uh, making set pieces again here at Matlock Bath and uh, the members of the committee, of which um, Jackie and I were, we used to help with the painting of, of those sets. And of course we were buying sort of second-hand equipment from Blackpool at that time. And uh, so that the illumination side was very, very different to what it is today. But we also decided, of course, that we probably got to uh, zip up the, uh, the opening night. And we had some really remarkable... Uh, People came here to do that, uh, some of that very base of that bandstand is where some very famous people have trod, to be quite honestly, and there were some wonderful characters who uh, delighted the crowds. And of course when you think about that time as well, the average attendance for the season, this was a paid attendance, was round about 95,000. It was a big attendance, but of course the season was longer. So uh, that's how we accommodated that. But Noel Gordon was really the first one. And of course she was prominent on Crossroads at the time. She was a, a charming lady, but Roy Castle was one of my, one of my favorites. He gave a marvelous performance here. Uh, John Pertwee was another one who was great. Uh, so yeah, we had some good times and some good banter and some wonderful crowds uh, to greet them here. And um, 
that was very successful. But of course, then it had to change and move on again as uh, the costs started to really get beyond what the admission could bring in. And so we had to start looking at different ways. Mm. But central to all of this, all the way through, has always been the illuminated and decorated boats. They are the thing that are absolutely unique to Matlock Bath and which people really come to see from all over the country. And I mean, um, they now are so different to what they were then. I mean, the technology and the work that goes into them, well, every year they amaze even me uh, on how they're developing. And I know that this year will probably be, uh, well, uh, dare I say it, the best ever, to be honest. We've got one or two younger people because there are people there on the river who are not too far behind me. I won't mention any names, but uh, they are. They've been doing it for an awful long time. Um, and, uh, you know, but the standard of the models is absolutely incredible now to what it was. And uh, I manage to get myself excited every year because I think this, they are so, so good. And I think people, well, I hear the applause and I hear the, the remarks as well. And uh, it's absolutely marvellous that we've got this, which is something which is unique to Matt like that, and they can't see anywhere else. And that's what we've got to hang on to. That's the precious thing. We always pray for good weather. And, of course, back to 1983 was a disastrous season. And, of course, it, it made, uh, led to a big change the following year. It did indeed, yes. We didn't have a fine weekend in that season. It's hard to believe that that could happen now with the sort of lovely autumns we've been having of late. But one always has to be prepared that that can happen. And... Um, the voluntary company, as it was then, they, they had got enough money really to put the next year on, but they hadn't really got enough to see them through until the cash flow came on, and that's when they had talks with the council, and it was decided that um, you know, the council would take the event on, but with the, the boats and the volunteers still um, working alongside the council. And so that's how it happened, and Derbyshire Dales, West Derbyshire as it was then, you know, sort of saved the event because they understood the importance of this to the economy of the, uh, of the district. And, of course, that's what it remains today, really. A difficult question, I know, but is there a, a single highlight in all those 50 years, Jeff? Um... <coughs> I don't know that there really is, to be honest, because my highlight is... People often ask me, Jeff, why do you do this? Why do you, why do, you do this every Saturday and Sunday night? Are you completely mad, you know? And I, I say, no, not really, because I said the joy I get is... I hope I contribute something to getting people to really enjoy what they're seeing. And they do. And they gasps when the boats light up and the applause is something which is incredible so I get a buzz from that as well um, I'm helping what all that hard work of those boat builders to be appreciated and it sort of captivates you really you get hooked on it and so I think it's the people the reason why I keep coming is because the people keep coming and I love to see those family units really enjoying themselves and having a great evening. And you definitely think there's a future for the illuminations? Oh, I do. I, I think there must be somehow, whatever happens. And, you know, we've got to find a way of keep going on. And the event will evolve and reflect the times that we live in. Um, but it's amazing, isn't it, that something that, uh, you know, has been going so long is so appealing to people now as it was when it was first started uh, uh, and that is what we've got to hang on to we've got to hang on to that uh, traditional element bringing it up to date of course all the time and moving it forward but really making sure that it's still here for people